Hey guys, it's Daner here. So, some questions about the alternator install. Well, let's get started here. For basics, this is a $65 GM 65 amp 10 SI alternator that I purchased from CarQuest. Um, the only listings I gave for this was I asked for an alternator for an 85 GMC 1500 pickup truck, two-wheel drive, automatic with AC, and they gave me this. Can I get with the price at all for a brand new one? Well, remanufactured, pretty much brand new. That aside, there it is. So to mount this, it's pretty simple. I just built a simple little U-bracket there, made out of quarter by one inch flat stock, cut up, welded it into a U-shape, welded onto the blower housing of the the engine itself. This is an 18 horse Briggs and Stratton post twin, by the way. Um, did a little bit of extra welding on the corners of the blower shrouds there just to hold it together, stop the vibrations and whatnot. And on this side, this is a mower bracket adjusting slot off the cutting deck of an MTD. Uh, one of the lift brackets that I used so that as the belt wears and stretches, I can loosen that and move the alternator up and down to adjust my belt tension. <clears throat> The belt is a 37 inch Kevlar Pix belt that I picked up the other night, finally got the right one. And to drive it, I basically put a 3.5 inch pulley on the back of my main sprocket, just welded it on there in a few spots, then put a 3 inch on the alternator just to give her a bit of a slight geared reduction there, just in case under heavy load, which doesn't seem to mind upwards of 70 amps load. Handles it quite well, even idling, which actually surprised me because I thought it would have bogged it down a little bit. Dumb. Anyways, around to wiring. This is a three wire setup. So basically, you've got three posts. Your battery terminal, your field terminal, and your regulator terminal. Which basically, this wire right here takes power. Well, actually it's your sense wire really. It tells the regulator what the voltage of the battery is at. Uh, in order for the alternator to regulate the power at approximately 14.4 volts. So this wire gets power off the battery typically or off the battery post terminal if you have a nice short run of wire like me to the battery. Uh, so it gets power all the time, which is number two terminal. Your number one, which is your field terminal here, this wire runs all the way down to a dummy light. And basically it can't be an LED, it has to be a standard ball of about 2.8 watts, which I found hard to find a pilot light that was 2.8 watts because most of them are only about a watt or two. Um, from there it goes from that side, I'll come back to that, but from the other side of the dummy light it goes to the positive side of your ignition switch or in my case relay that's only on when the key is on. Just so that that only gets power when the key is on. Otherwise the battery will die and if you don't have the light and you just run a straight wire right to the alternator it will burn the alternator out. Um, in order to get this to function, to turn on at the, a lower speed, which is what I wanted, I had to kind of pair up an additional 3 watt trailer light clearance light down here in order for it to turn on to have the appropriate amount of resistance in line with the alternator. Um, for what I found, if you use just this, it works perfectly fine, but I figured I'd put this in the dash because it was a lot more cosmetically appealing instead of that big ugly one that I had mounted right across here. Um, now. Besides that, the battery terminal wire, typically here, will go straight from your battery, the big nut on the back of it, all the way up to your positive. But in this case, I wanted to see what the alternator was putting into the battery under load. So instead, I ran it all the way out and around here, my little junction right here, to the negative side of the alternator. Sorry, the positive side. Here. I then ran the negative side of here all the way to the positive of the battery. And this also works pretty well because when I installed my power inverter, I ran its current wires to the positive on the alternator and the ground on the alternator. Now the ground on an alternator usually isn't necessary. Usually it gets quite a good enough ground through the brackets itself. But I wanted to make sure and I ran a separate ground right to the negative terminal. Which came in handy because when I put my power inverter in I had positive and negative right there. And as I was saying, this gauge comes in handy here the way I have it wired because it shows me what the alternator is putting in. Plus, it also shows me what my power inverter is drawing. I have stuff hooked up to it. So it kind of comes in handy. Uh, the battery is a Group 24 
interstate deep cycle. Uh, like I said, it's approximately about 690 cold cranking amps or something like that. 140 minute reserve capacity. Works at about be about 84 amp an hour on the load tester. Um, works pretty good. Another problem with it yet. It runs stuff for quite a while with the power inverter. I'm happy with it. My little recent little add-on here. My little cigarette lighter. Well, more of a PowerPoint, but just to keep things charged on the trails. Now, I know you guys probably want to see this run, see it working in action, so let me open the door here and fire it up for you. See what you guys think. Alright. So this is ice cold. Cook sure on the gauges there. We got 14 volts. No amps yet. Light is on. Light goes out, we are making current. 20 amps, 14 volts. So overall I gotta say it works pretty good. Kind of nice having it on top of the engine because we close the hood, cut us up so high, it puts the alternator right out of the dust and dirt and water and shit. Kind of something handy. Yeah, takes quite nicely. So if that light, the bonus of having that light in the dash, this one here, is the bonus of having the light because you can always just put a uh, 10 ohm resistor in place instead of the bulb and it'll work just fine. The bonus of having the bulb is that if your charging system ever decides to conk out on you, you have a bit of an early indication. I mean, for me, I have the voltage gauge and the amperage gauge, so that's pretty much more than enough for me, but hell, I like lights. I'm a moth. The more the merrier. Moving forward. Anyways. Oh yeah, and a couple people have asked me too how I did my little snorkel setup here. Basically, got some foam tape, sealed up all the ridges around the intake cap, sealed up all the holes in it, Utilize the big hole, remove the plug that goes from the blower housing into here because I kept getting water in the air box every time I hit a damn puddle. And just ran some sump pump hose siliconed in here up above the battery. Seems to work pretty damn good. I haven't had her snuff out yet going through water, so only time will tell. And as I was saying before, my little power inverter comes in handy. Runs lights, work lights when I'm out in the field and out and about working around and drills, grinders battery chargers and the whatnot comes in handy but yes there is no steering wheel my steering assembly is still sitting over there behind the drill presses in pieces still waiting on Toronto belt and bearing to get back to me with a bearing number so I can get the steering together once we got her together we can take her out for a boot and uh, see what happens from there once we get the steering together we can move on to getting rid of these shite horrific all-terrain tires which seem to work not bad with James on them but it could be a hell of a lot better. And uh, look at sticking a couple 26 inch quad tires on there that one of our other users on the uh, main mud mowers group has for me. So hopefully at some point I can get those on. Get this puppy all up and going and slinging some mud. And yeah, from there we should be good. And that's it for now guys. If you have any further questions, don't feel free to hit me up on the Facebook group main mud mowers i am daner morgan this is my unit the green machine and that's telling you guys right now just to take her easy keep your wrenches swinging and have a good one ciao